Welcome to Now and Forever, a series of 10-minute reflections on good news spirituality, sponsored by the Charles and Catherine Free Family Foundation, headquartered in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and brought to you from Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Parish here in Watertown, New York. Pat and Vicki are with us again, and this we're going to continue the discussion of culture and evangelization. And uh, Vicki's going to lead us off. Vicki? If we are to benefit from the teachings of Pope Paul VI in his apostolic exhortation entitled Evangelization in the Modern World, we must begin with an understanding of the role of culture in human affairs. A good example of how this works can be found in George Washington's farewell address as he left the office of president. He first stated the fairly obvious truth that without mor morality, freedom, and democracy, cannot survive, for lawless and immoral people will surely abuse the public trust. He then said that morality without religion cannot survive. Thus, Washington, our first president, made a compelling case to keep religion in our nation's culture, for he knew from experience that the morality needed to preserve the high values of freedom and democracy can be found only in men and women who acknowledge God as their sovereign Lord. Very good. And this goes. This, this is uh, Washington's farewell address, and um, what he's talking about, you know, is how that uses an example. What 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 uh, culture does? It authorizes human behavior. It says this is what you expect it to do, and this is what you shouldn't do, and this is how you benefit others, and this is how you make a contribution to the common weal, to the common good, and so that that. The, People who are democratic in the true sense of the word are people who are concerned about their neighbor and the common good. When you get so individualistic that the only thing matters is your rights, and that's another dumb thing in the world today, then when of course the whole thing falls apart. You have to have, you cannot, it's like in a public school, in order to teach you have to have a certain value base. You can't just say we don't have any values. Because you have to share values in order to actually be able to communicate some kind of a way of life or, or uh, the way to get to head together. So anyhow, he says, uh, but the key here is that Washington not only said you, you, you know, if you don't have morality, guess what? You're going to be a police state. That's what happens. And after the guy, the guy recently said, you couldn't afford to hire that many people, policemen. <laughs> and then he says, but then Washington made the statement that morality without religion cannot survive. So religion, you know, when they talk about uh, why do we have a tax-exempt status for religion, whatever group it is, precisely because religion makes people into moral people. Now, take that second paragraph, because I think he, he goes right on and goes far ahead and moves forward. Yeah. On From their opposition to Christmas carols in public schools and Christmas cribs in the town square, it would appear that the secular humanists disagree with Washington's view on the need for religion to sustain the democracy. Yet they would have their own atheistic views survey the, the very same end that Washington had in mind. Indeed, they mean to make their beliefs the equivalent of a state religion in violation of so-called established clause, establishment clause, which they constantly invoke and transgress. Got that, Biggie? They invoke the Establishment Clause and they transgress it because they would make their beliefs the, the equivalent of a state religion. And they do this. And it's, it goes, you know, on the rest. Yeah. Because you can't talk about anything about a real religion in a public school. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> That's a, they just established a certain uh, establishment. Yeah. And, and, and they, they do so by invoking the Establishment Clause. Pew! You know, that really shows how, where we're at. You, you, you can well, have, we have people craziest things. We have people that back that up. Yeah, of course. I, I don't know. <laughs> but doesn't ring true. No, it surely doesn't. Now, I'll to you this last one here. This, this, in fact, I, we haven't been watching our clock too well. But here's the last, here's the last, I think this is the last and uh, final paragraph. Um, the basic doctrine of secular humanists, hey, uh, here I am waving my hand to our cameraman here, pardon me. <laughs> the basic doctrine of secular the human is, is enlightened self-interest. That's what they, this is what, that's the bottom line. Now, enlightened self-interest would not have served well at Valley Forge or as the fireman's code at the Twin Towers. Can you imagine, I have enlightened self-interest, I'm going to go into that 
Twin Towers and try to save people. It wouldn't have gone in. Wouldn't have gone in. No. In his time, Washington was looking for God-fearing people. He wasn't talking about politics or enlightened expediency. He was talking about a culture forged from the shared belief that God is the author of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's it. There was a shared belief that you had to be God. They believed in God. And they believed that he was the guy that authorized the pursuit of happiness. Just so evangelization isn't a political exercise. It aims at affecting or upsetting. This is a quote out of uh, Evangelium in Siandi again. Let me do this. Just so evangelization isn't a political exercise. It aims at, quote, affecting or upsetting through the power of the gospel, mankind's way of making judgments, identifying values, Establishing points of interest, lines of thought, sources of inspiration, and models of life, wherever found, contrary to the Word of God and the plan of salvation. Evangelion and Siani, paragraph 19. Wow, you see that? That's a big mouthful. That talks about what is culture is the way you identify values. And then establish points of interest where you have, you know, this is an interest of mine and yours, how do we work these together? The ways of making judgments. How do you reach a conclusion? What is a value? Or what is a need? Or what's just a, what's a genuine right? Or what's just a want? You know, I want this. And, and not only identifying values, and, and, but sources of inspiration. Where you have, you know, models that you're going to follow. That, that you know, like the George Washington, somebody, you say, models of life, wherever found contrary to the, the Word of God, however, those you want to get rid of. So that, that, uh, that's a good, that's a very good bunch of, those three paragraphs are pretty powerful. So we're going to say, this is how culture works. Culture is uh, that which authorizes human behavior, formed by plurality, and it needs a place to happen. That's why we have to have ways of sharing our culture. Not just in, 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 in a church, but in a home, and in, in public affairs. Okay, uh, thanks for being with us. Take care and God bless.